Welcome to not what I picking to friends react to crazy ex girlfriend. Just a couple of silly friends talking about serious stuff. Hello. So, unfortunately, we had some technical difficulties last week. My fault, I'm sorry, but um, we lost the recording that we did, and we decided to prioritize other things going on in our lives instead of try to re-record that one, since there wasn't a ton going on in that last episode. So we'll just... Can you recap a little bit? Yeah, we can totally recap. So... Last week, <laughs> we're still doing it. <laughs> Last week, we watched episode 16. Josh's sister's getting married. And we saw boundary discussions with Paula. And we. Paula admitting her fear around their relationship yeah and based on the relationship they had with the boundaries with each other before misunderstandings happened the whole wedding dress debacle oh my god but oh but at least at least at least at least valencia is now in the good graces of her boyfriend's family and I'm sure that brings her a lot of peace. Yeah, I think we both really felt for Valencia during a lot of that episode. And I remember discussing how sometimes, like when she walked in with those big angel wings, um, I think we, we talked about how I really resonated with sometimes putting on an act to make yourself seem better when you feel insecure around certain people um, as sort of armor. And Rebecca got rid of all of her Josh stuff and jumped right onto Greg, literally. <laughs> oh yeah, is there a cute name for the two of them yet? Oh yeah, I don't know, what is their couple name? Greca? Oh, after the whole wedding dress scandal, um, Josh barges right the fuck in Rebecca's door, says, <laughs> what do you think you're doing? And she, rightfully so, says, what do you think you're doing? Yeah, yeah, loved that. Yeah, yeah, how's it feel? Unrequited, how's it feel? Tibris Trex, I hear you that Valencia has also made some comments that would lead one away from trusting her. But I want to warn, I want to, I want, I want to gently suggest that trying to mind read people and trying to navigate signals that you're guessing that you're receiving is a really painful painful way to treat oneself to believe that everyone is hiding something or that anyone is hiding something. I, I gave up trying to mind read. And um, I only take people at face value. You know, if somebody tells me thanks, they're telling me thanks. They said the words. I'm not responsible for what someone doesn't want to tell me outright. So... I know that it's the result of a uh, result of a, like a needing to guess, believing that guessing would help. 
Um, but it feels so good to just rest in the knowledge of not my problem. <laughs> if if someone tells me, if someone is trying to be dishonest somehow and not tell me the whole truth, like I can only give what you give me. I can't be held responsible for you not telling me what you need. I definitely ask people to be very explicit with me. I'm not good at guessing and I don't want to. It's not fair to ask people. I do think that Tiberius Trex is onto something about Valencia not actually challenging the way that she is treating Josh or this relationship. She's not really addressing any of the negative patterns in her behavior. And I, I do think that that's important, that she's not really showing that level of awareness and willingness to do that, that kind of work. I have my own, like, personal fan theory about Valencia, but it's not quite time to talk about it yet. <laughs> I'm excited. Juice Denny? Oh yeah, said that... Dr. Akopian saying want to give therapy a try would have been part of the dream. And then Rebecca wakes up at the end and thanks her. She could have said oh! She never would talk to a patient outside of therapy or something like that. Yeah, I think that totally would have worked. Yeah, if they just included that as being part of her dream, instead of specifying that it was outside of it, that would have fixed that easily. Very good point. Angel Brewer. While there is an argument for the black therapist trope, doesn't Father Bra fill the exact same role to Josh? Weren't they friends as kids? They were friends as kids, yeah. But he definitely does fill a sort of advisory role um, in his life. Mm -hmm. Certainly. So yeah, I think looking at the differences between how these two are represented um, will be interesting. Do we learn more about Father Bra's life and inner life than we do Dr. Okopian's or vice versa? As I said, I don't remember, so I'm excited to find out. Well, um, with Father Bra, you saw him talking to other community members other people in his church paula and her husband true and that was outside of advisory position to josh yeah and yeah just having like giving him the backstory of having grown up together yeah i think he's he's, he's a little fleshed out as a character. Yeah, we know that he enjoys basketball. And weed. And weed. <laughs> um, I don't know much of anything about Dr. Copian's interests. We'll find out if that changes. Yeah. And uh, just to be explicit, since we were talking about that earlier, um, you were intentionally mispronouncing everyone's names. You're not the only one. gonna. <laughs> we are not professionals of any kind, mental health or otherwise. We don't own the content. It's over on Netflix right now. Cause we're Limbar and Enug. 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 This is gonna be like three days of you and me just ruining each other. It is 35 points or more. I think you're cheating. Yeah, yeah, you're cheating. Give me How phone. can I be cheating? I'm no. sitting right next to you. Hey, hey, hey. Hello again. Oh, hello. Shall we? She looks comfortable. And I like that he's asking for consent at every turn. Talk for a second. I probably want to talk about, you know, all these changes because we had 
a complex history. Oh, you mean because you like broke my heart a bunch of times? I don't care about that anymore. And you, you ran to the courthouse. Honestly, it's like a distant memory. How does she know about the courthouse? Paula might have told her. Just want to keep things casual? Yep, just light and polite. <sighs> You're so pretty. Now she looks uncomfortable. Yeah, Grape's not great with the intimacy. <laughs> Although he certainly craves it. Mm hmm. How was your weekend? Stupid. Come on, Paula. <laughs> I need you to try, okay? I had to take my sweaters out of the space bag. Oh my god, this is so boring. Oh my god, you never told me about a pie contest? She has other stuff to talk about than Josh. Right? I mean, they work in the same field. Can't they find anything of interest? Oh no, 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 no. I see what this is. This isn't about pie. You're trying to distract me from Josh. You're trying to give us a new mission. What's wrong with the new mission? I think it's a good idea. Let her help you with something you love. Why not? But I am gonna head out right now to the local pie supply shop. So he is texting her while she's at work. You know, like, found I don't know. Sorry we couldn't go to my place. Lately, my dad's been, uh... Living there for 30 years. Yeah, yeah, and I, look, I wish we could go more to my place, but I just don't want Heather to see you coming and going. I think it better. Wasn't he just at her place? Where were they? <laughs> they were definitely at her place. And how cute are these hats? Ah, it is such an honor that your sister asked me to do the gift bags for her wedding. I can't believe it. We know where we're headed. We know what the future is. Nothing and no one can come between us ever again. I got so much fun stuff. I got every single flower imaginable. Oh my gosh, wait. This is my favorite one. Cricket flower. Nope. <laughs> Another good nope. <laughs> Are you sure? Are you sure you're just playing with a friend? Mm, yeah. What why doesn't she want Paula to know? I don't know the answer to this. Oh, uh-huh. Paula, okay. You know, Paula, just... Okay, uh, all right. Okay, let's talk about our boundary issues, okay? I am totally on board for some post-heartbreak getting down, so tell me who is it, who is it? Really, it's no one. I'm not having intercourse with anyone. I am all for it. As long as it's not Greg. I like the guy. I really do, but he is not romance material, okay? He is a booze hound. He is completely shut down. And he is angry. Those were all really good reasons. Yeah. But her alternative is not better. Right. I think I have UTI. Urinary tract infection. Wait, what is that? Oh, you're such a man. Okay. Don't give him that excuse. For a caused by excessive amounts of vigorous sexual activity. Among other things. Also, shorter people are more prone to them. It has a shorter tract for bacteria to travel. Yes. What's that burning feeling? No. I gave you a UTI. Just that good. I didn't even try, try, try. This is so gross. Oh no. <laughs> Comment on the quality of the sex. Don't Should ruin this for me. That information is my little gift to you. My penis is the reason you may die, die, die. I gave you a UTI. One night with me is pure ecstasy. What has two thumbs and gave you a UTI? Guy. Uh, ah! Gross. Like, uh, I just saw. Uh, I harmed you a little bit. I think that's so gross. I mean, yeah, I mean, no, like, okay, okay, okay. Let me separate. There's a couple different layer, layers of gross happening. Okay. One, the medical. 
to the masculine. Mm-hmm. Ooh. 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 I don't know. That's so gross. That's so gross. Like, ah, I put my flag here. Ha! I destroyed it. Ugh. I made it worse. Ha ha. Yeah. I think there are a couple of things that I love about it, including the masculinity part. While I agree that that is playing into toxic masculinity, what I like about it is that it's taking a natural thing that happens to a wide variety of bodies um, and reframes it in a way that they can talk about um, without feeling ashamed of it. And if it's, even if that is repeating some kind of, like, toxic masculinity things, I feel like it's still important that they're at least starting to be able to have the conversation at all. Um, because especially older men have a really hard time talking about these issues, and a lot of times that leads to policies that are not helpful. I also like that they are bringing awareness to the fact that it can be lethal. Even if they're they're joking about it in a song and, and making it entertaining, I have a family member who died of a, a bladder infection that started like as a UTI. So that is a very real thing and I do appreciate that they're having this much more public conversation about it. Even if it is squeamish. <laughs> little squeamish yeah okay well maybe one day it won't be at least that part and everyone reacts to it differently too so <laughs> so i grew up with a family who was in the medical field and so sometimes to me i don't know what makes people squeamish <laughs> if one good thing can come from my searing pain it's that it feeds your ego fine i caught it early i'll just take some cranberry pills and painkillers Great, you got this. Toronto's in a good mood. Yeah, it's gross. Like, I would have never slept with that guy. I didn't know they were friends. Well, she works there now, though. Oh, yeah. Valencia's probably, like, all up on you to propose, right? She's not hurrying me or anything. She respects me too much. <laughs> she respects you. Hey, Hi. how are you? I'm... It's been a while. Oh. Right. Yeah, I haven't seen you in like forever. They look like they just spent three days having sex and eating Chinese food. What are you talking about? You are losing it. Greg and Rebecca, bitch, she doesn't even like Greg, you... you... dumb face. I have like the smartest face in here. <laughs> Ew, Heather, it's true! Heather, I'm so sorry. I've been meaning to tell you. I'm so sorry. Do you hate me? No, it's cool. You just have to get married and have eight babies. It hurts my feelings, but it's okay if it's love. Like, Woody and Soon Yi are still together, so that, like, kind of makes it... Oh, n no. No. That analogy doesn't really track, because Greg's you. not my elderly de facto stepfather. You've got the upper hand, but now you're in the driver's seat. Cruising down the 405, wind blowing in your hair. Keep it going. That way she can't burn you again. No, that's terrible advice. It's very bad advice. <laughs> Rebecca, it's simple. Before sex, women have the power. After, men have it. I don't like any of this. No. I... Nope. I am going to go do my work back at work. Yeah, she probably wasn't going to get any work done there. Hey, Sensei, do you mind if I use the dojo for a few minutes? <laughs> Angry! Why do I feel this way? Angry! Bad! He's so good! Bad! Oh, yeah, getting in touch with your feelings is hard! Bad! Huh? It's fun. We're doing some espionage. 
We're gonna do something new. We're gonna take a quick intermission, get some snack, get some water, make sure to move that body, and we are encouraging you to do that as well. I don't know how long you've been at that seat, looking at that screen, but maybe it could be beneficial to move just a little bit. If you uh, want to, go ahead and pause now. Otherwise, keep watching and we'll continue. And get some snacks. It's even better. <laughs> My list that I put together of the people you could possibly be sleeping with. No sexy time. I'm not having sex with anyone. Let's drop it and focus on pie. Let's follow her. Let's stalk her, let's see what she does. No, we can't do that, it's the middle of the day. Plus, we're not cartoon detectives. Not yet we're not. What if we came back at night, broke in? It's a real devious plan, and you love devious plans. Oh, yeah. Paula, you can change. But, I mean, truly, life changes too fast to stay still. Gotta be open to what's coming. Because yeah. that which does not change becomes stagnant. And the whole continuing to want to have the Josh thing happen is growing stagnant. But that's just me. You're spending way too much time with Rebecca. Which I decided today. Saturday night, I have a date with a girl named Angie. She's bringing her cousin from Denver. Greg, dating other people is the number one way to maintain the upper hand. Do you want company in that shower? I'm, okay, you know, I'm sorry. Just not right now. Another time. Are you rejecting me? Are you turning down sex? Josh can turn down sex. And, and, and that's what he is be doing. What is wrong with Josh? I, it's okay. I think you're acting like a little bitch right now. Whoa, dude. You chose Valencia. And now you can't let go of Rebecca's attention and adoration. And that's how you're acting like a little bitch. If Rebecca seems happy, you gotta bow out, dog. Well, I appreciate the directness. I don't know. It was, it was language Josh would understand. Yeah, and sometimes that matters. Mm hmm But I say no, 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 this is just about sex. And no, 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 don't be such a girl. Aw, be the one with no needs. But then I'm upside down next to my kitchen sink. Like, oh my God. can stop the image of you and me i felt that with a with a partner and we talked about it and it'll be four years in march yay yeah ah. <laughs> Yeah, that's nice. It's you know that that cute little moment where you're like, "Have we only met each other at night?" <laughs> like, oh, we did have daylight dates now. <laughs> yeah, it's so relatable. The moment of, wow, I, I think I have feelings and i think they feel good but but i wasn't aiming for that no <laughs> my first hint was when i knit them a hat <laughs> it was like a couple of weeks in i was like mm, yeah <laughs> that's cute <laughs> And I love the upside down shot. Oh. Yeah, because you know the camera's like this fucking big. <laughs> they wrote so many songs for the show. They did like three to four original songs for like 50 episodes, something like that. Wow. Adam Schlesinger? 
who was the other person who did did the songs with Rachel Bloom. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he died um, from COVID right at the beginning of the pandemic. Mm. I think Rachel Bloom was still in the hospital from just having given birth when she found out that he had died. Wow. You know, like, even the process of observing it is a lot. You know, like, I feel like I've grown. Yeah. And changed. And that's a lot. I yeah. feel like for every for every way that this song, this show has changed me in a way that I like, that I want to keep, that's his legacy. Yeah. He was also in a famous band before that, which I can't remember the name of right now because I don't think I actually listened to any of their music, but like... Oh no! Was it Fountains of Wayne? Yeah! I remember that being an early COVID shocker. Like, ooh, I had personal memories about that in college. Oh. Oh, so you were familiar. I wasn't. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Maybe I should look up some Fountains of Wayne. I think that's what we're learning here. Yeah, just... And it makes so much sense that it's the same person because, like, there's this one song that tells the story of, I think, like, a car accident. Mm-hmm. And, like, going through dying and saying, you're the last thing on my mind. Wow. That's intense. Yeah. That's sweet. Oh, and just to know that this is the same. Oh. It's tender. Mm-hmm. Yeah, every time a song gets stuck in my head, I'll try to think of it. I'm late. I have been standing in front of this stupid pie shop for 20 minutes. I know, I'm so sorry. Why do you meet in front of the pie shop? That's not covert. Your drop-off points and your leaving points... Oh, it should be far away from where you're doing the thing. Basic rave rules. Don't take your lift to the rave. Take it a couple blocks away. (laughs) They bust parties that way. That's, that's a thing. Oh no. She is doing something secretive. She is a secret ingredient of some kind. The second she's gone, we're going in. It's just that easy. Well, like, this isn't even her first break and enter. Oh, God. Yeah. It's... Yeah, it's unsalted butter. You don't need a secret ingredient, right? Just like we don't need a secret ingredient. Mm-hmm. We've been having so much fun. Forget all I was saying about winning and let's just have fun and bake a pie. Let's do this. Yeah. Okay. Hey, boot five. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh wow. I just... <laughs> Hector wants me to meet this girl. Uh uh-huh, and you said yes? Well, I haven't said anything either way yet. Uh uh-huh. I-, I mean, totally. I myself have like um eight dates lined up next week. <laughs> Great date. Yeah, that strategy's working really well. That reminds me of this. Ben Fold song, uh, Ben Fold's vibe. I'm not sure. Um, you never rest fighting the battle of who could care less. Mm. <laughs> I want to be a pie judge, right? How do I get out on this action? How do I get on this? You know, I'm so glad we did this together. You were right about us. Mm. (laughs) I'm sorry, I need to go. Nice meeting you. (laughs) For bro, so rude. That really wasn't that rude. Although he could have explained somebody was in the hospital. Mm Mm-hmm. 
Well, I guess we'll just have to have a threesome. Really? No, she's my cousin. Gross. Ew. Just as they were dragging your little body away, they, they announced Paula's pretty pecan pie won. Yay, Paula! Doctor, what's wrong with my cookie? I don't know what's wrong with your cookie, but hers is a mess. <laughs> I'm sorry, that was inappropriate. It's her pee hole that's been destroyed. So that's illegal. He can't talk to them about her medical information like that. Hey, we don't keep secrets and we don't lie to each other, okay? We've discussed it and we don't do it. You're sleeping with Rebecca. All the time, a lot. <laughs> You're sleeping with Greg? How could you? I'm glad Rebecca didn't have to be the one to fess up because that would have been really weird and uncomfortable. So at least all the answers came out anyway. So it's all fine, right? Yeah. <laughs> Paula's still texting Josh. What the fuck? Yeah, that was not super cool. Yeah, I thought we talked about this. Yeah, you talked about not lying to each other. Yeah, you talked about not lying to each other, but you also talked about not being involved with Josh anymore, and... Hmm. And, like, again, I get how, while the doctors, uh, egregious, um, use of medical information was not lifelike it did prompt the conversation of who's sleeping with rebecca yes we're sending some mixed messages like for one thing we're saying like oh yeah you definitely want to get medical attention for your uti but then on the other hand this is what happens to your medical information when you go see a doctor like that's <sighs> It's like Paula saying, you know, no more lies, but then not giving Rebecca a safe, like, place to tell her story, to tell her truth. You know, just as long as it's not Greg. You know, of course she's not going to say anything in, in that kind of environment. Or, I mean, I don't know about of course, but, like, it takes a whole other level fortitude to deal with. <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, I guess they didn't really get into what Josh's reaction so far had been. Like, other than a little bit of being yeah. taken aback. He looked upset when Rebecca was looking up. Mm. His facial expression to me looked like he was angry although it looked like he was angrier at greg was my it was so brief though of a shot yeah i mean not not to this degree but i've also struggled with um not feeling respected by a doctor and it's a really vulnerable place to be in and then just to have the have the vibe be off is a really uncomfortable feeling yeah I've had a number of bad doctors. I've had great doctors, but yeah. It's an intimate That's... relationship. Definitely some that I would not trust with my life. Mhm. Mm I wish I knew the solution. Commenters, help me out here. Of coping with medical appointment stress um warning signs knowing what to look for how should i be feeling how should i not be feeling around a physician or something like that and then how to advocate for myself and how to Make an exit strategy if that needs to happen. Very good questions. 
I don't know the answer to this shit. But I feel like if we can at least start the conversation, then maybe we can strike that gap between what we're saying of like, yes, if you have a UTI, get medical attention versus if you get medical attention, you're going to be humiliated. You know? We don't need to compound the issue. Especially when there's stigma involved. Yeah. Sorry again for missing last week. Like, comment, and subscribe. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Join us next week for episode 18. Paula needs to get over Josh. Yeah. Yeah. Damn it. This is the last episode of season one. And oh, what a ride it's been. Have a lovely week, everyone. Goodbye.